I am made of the light that hung the stars in the night. A perfect thought since time began. I am, I am, I am one with the love that's holding all of us. It's power in my hands. I am, I am, I am called by the voice that speaks of truth and joy forever blessed where I stay I am I am I am made of the light that hung the stars in the night a perfect thought since time began I am I am I am one with the love that's holding on it's power in my hands. I am, I am, I am called by the voice that speaks of truth and joy. Forever blessed where I stay. Please pray with me as we gather today on this beautiful, beautiful summer afternoon. I know that God is here all around within each person, each object in this building and outside this building. Every person, place and thing is an expression of God and has a little bit of, of God within it. And I just know that we are all just beautiful, beautiful expressions of the divine. And anyone who worships their higher power, no matter where they are, who they're with, what words they're using, they are all worshiping the one God because God is all there is and we are all one. And today I'm just so grateful for everyone who is involved with making this service happen. The volunteers who set up out in the outer room and got our snacks together. The set up people who, who just were here early to make sure everything is just so. 
And we are so blessed to have Cody and AJ here as our fabulous sound engineers. And we are also blessed to have Ken performing for us today. And I also remember my fellow practitioners who I know are uplifting us right as we speak. And right here, right now, I know that Reverend Jen ex is expressing perfect health, perfect healing, and perfect wholeness as she is resting at home. And blessings to Russell, who has stepped in to deliver our message. And I know his words will touch everyone who hears them. And I know that we are all blessed, just as we are all blessings to the world. And I remind everybody that we are always, always surrounded by infinite possibilities. And to remember that as you go through your week. And with a grateful heart, I release this prayer to the law, knowing that the law only says yes. I affirm that God's got us and all is well because all is God. And please join me in saying, and so it is. Good afternoon. Today I have three readings for our words of inspiration. The first is from Peace Pilgrim. What we call, what we usually call human evolution is the awakening of the divine nature within us. And from Russell M. Nelson, how you deal with life's trials is part of the development of your faith. Strength comes when you remember that you have a divine nature and an inheritance of infinite worth. And finally, from our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, Spiritual, spirituality is natural goodness. God is not a person. God is a presence personified in us. Spirituality is not a thing. It is the atmosphere of God's presence, goodness, truth, and beauty. In our way of life, we say that everything that follows I am follows us. I am naturally divine. And when I want to see what divinity looks like, all I have to do is look across this room. And it's clear. It is crystal clear. God shows up, puts on his pants, his shirt, his tie, his makeup, comes to meetings, comes to this service in multiple expressions to let me know that God is at work in my life. It's a beautiful thing. And so we spent the month talking about nature here. Week one, we talked about earth force, which was for duty. And earth represents the expression of the entire material world that we see. We talked about water during the second week, which is a life-giving nectar. It is so valuable, it is so important to us, along with earth itself. Last week, we talked about our friends, the furry, the fuzzy, the slimy, the scaly, and everyone else. We're not the only citizens of this planet, of this space that God, in infinite love and wisdom, gave to us. And our friends, our aboriginal friends, speak of them as winged people, four-legged, water people, and they express in this time. They are expressions. Every physical thing that we can see 
is an expression of the divine that includes people. Each and every one of you, like snowflakes, there's only one of you. There are things that none of the other seven and a half billion people on this planet can do that you are capable of doing. You have a unique charge. So we are part of this nature. And what is the ultimate nature? God. There's one source, there's one life, there's God, there's only God. Every physical thing is a manifestation and expression of that. It is a power that knows itself, it can't work against itself. And only good comes from this power. Our nature is the same nature as that power. It's to grow, it's to evolve, it's to create. And many times we forget our divinity. We, like everything else here, are naturally divine. Life waits upon man's discovery of natural laws, his discovery of himself, and his discovery of his relationship to the whole. Our founder, in his wisdom, pointed out that we have that nature. We are like, we are like God. There's one gift that we have that all of other creatures don't have. It's volition. It's this knowing of that divinity. There's a natural order to things, you know. And it's funny, I have to point out that we're the only creatures on God's earth that suffer for the same mistakes multiple times because we're smarter than the rest of them. <laughs> We don't have a situation where you see a rhinoceros trying to be a horse, a pigeon trying to be an eagle. We just don't see that. They are in the divine. They are in themselves. And they know their place. And they are connected to everything. They don't take more than they need. Their instincts function as they were designed. Now here's the double-edged sword of volition that we have as people. You know. We have this consciousness, we have this journey that we can go on to discover our true nature. We are divine, but we often forget that the other inhabitants of this planet are divine too. We forget our own divinity. Yeah. What we teach here is that we believe that there is within us that which partakes of the nature of divine being. Thus, we're all divine. Now, we don't always acknowledge that. We don't always remember that. But this doesn't change the fact that we're divine. It's stated in our first two principles, the science of mind and what we believe. We believe in God the living spirit almighty, one indestructible, absolute, and self-existent cause. This one manifests itself and in and through all creation, but it's not absorbed by creation. The manifest universe is the body of God. It is the logical and necessary outcome of the infinite self-knowingness of God. You are an expression of the infinite self-knowingness of God. Each and every one of you. That might be hard to remember when you're in traffic and people are driving too slow, or somebody runs a light, or somebody's sitting in the light and you're thinking to yourself, what's the matter with you, pal? Don't you like that shade of green? You're not gonna get another one. That second principle that reminds me we're connected, we believe in the individualization of the spirit in us and that all people are individualizations of the one spirit. It's hard to remember that that person that you were behind in Costco with a cart of items, or even better, the one that shows up with a pack of gum 
in a long line that's writing a check. And cards go, <laughs> it's hard to remember that, oh, that person is a divine expression of God. The person that's screaming out of the television set about universal grand conspiracies to destroy life on planet Earth is me nowhere. That person is a divine expression of God. They are part of nature. So here it says, you mustn't lose faith in humanity. Humanity is an ocean. If a few drops of the ocean are dirty, the whole ocean doesn't become dirty. Think about that. The vastness of the ocean. Now, and there's a biblical verse, and I'm going to paraphrase it. I don't want to butcher it, but it, it, it speaks to the effect that how can you love God whom you cannot see if you despise your brother or your sister? We can't really do what I call a spiritual bypass to get around people. Everyone is here to teach us something. It may be how not to show up. But everybody, Spirit's time is impeccable for the people that show up in our lives. Absolutely impeccable. The right people at the right time with the right message to help us navigate this journey, this complicated process of being human. And in it, we forget that with this volition, we have a responsibility to take care of this wonderful home called the Earth. We also have a responsibility to take care of this temple, which we call the body, because this is part of nature. If we are unkind to the body, the body and the mind are completely linked. If we are unkind to the body, the spirit suffers. This is the perfect vessel. Next time you're in front of the mirror, you know, as you're getting ready every day, hey, I'm in the perfect vessel. Thank you for this perfect vessel to bring my spirit through to love and serve in the world. It's a wonderful opportunity for us all. Everybody knows Mr. Rogers. He was a brilliant, brilliant man. When I was a boy, I would see scary things in the news. My mother would say to me, look for helpers. You will always find people who are healthy. And I love the wisdom of Fred Rogers. We forget, we get into this, this spirit, we are so magnificent. We're made up of so many different things. We're creative, we're loving, we're artistic, we are kind and compassionate. On the other hand, we can find that we're mean and frightened and, and, and egotistical at other moments. And out comes the spiritual billy club. We start beating ourselves up for everything we're not. And as luck would have it, after a while, we'll turn that spiritual billy club on our, on our brothers and sisters, on others. We have to learn to be kind to ourselves because our nature is to love and serve. How do I know this? Well, let's look at something like the floods, the, the fires that we had up north hurricanes. People come out of the woodwork. They're sending money, they're sending clothes, they're taking time off work, they're packing their stuff, and they're running to the fire. Not away from it, they're running to it. To be a service, to give of themselves, to give of their time, talent, and treasure everything that they are. And time, talent, treasure, we have all of these things. There's this mix of gifts. When the crap hits the fan, people come out of the woodwork to do good things. But we get stuck in the illusion of listening to Fox Noise and Messy NBC. And we start thinking, oh, everybody hates everybody. Oh, the world is burning down. Everything is falling apart. But when we're out in the field and we got our feet in the grass, and looking up in the sky and those, those cloud formations. Look up in the sky. I mean, the cloud formations are phenomenal. You never know 
It's like a moving canvas. You never know what kind of picture the spirit's going to create. And as you look around and see all the remarkable, beautiful animals, and you look up maybe at night, and you're looking at the stars, and you're thinking, where did all of this come from? And everything works by divine law. There are laws. Everything just works. It works in its natural order. The beauty of nature is just hard to put into words because we're dealing with something we can't comprehend or defy, but we shouldn't get lost in its magnificence. And we are each naturally divine because we are individual expressions of that. All of the talent all of the treasure, all of the time that has been gifted to you gives you that opportunity to express in the world in a way that nobody else can express. It's really something to celebrate, really something to be thrilled about. I'm thrilled about it. <laughs> it's just wonderful. Um, so with everything being naturally divine, you know, we know that life is, is just perfect as it is. Everything is absolutely perfect. Eric Butterworth follows this up by reminding us that there's no duplicates in creation. If somebody has a Pam Eichenberger stashed away, I want to know where the second one is. Because the way that my head works, and sometimes it hasn't served me very well, a bird can't fly on one wing, I might as well have another. But there's only one Pam. There's only one. There's only one of each, every one of them, as an expression of this life. And it's great. It's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful that we show up in this unique expression. And our fourth principle that our founder gave us says we believe that heaven is within us and that we experience it to the degree that we become consciousness of, uh, conscious of it. And this gets back to volition. God's great desire is for us to discover for ourselves the beauty of our, of our divinity, our connection to each and every part of this creation. It is a journey of discovery. And we get caught up in this trap of thinking, there's some place I have to get to. There's some sort of state of mind or existence that has to come forth where we just wake up and, I got it. I figured out when that moment is going to be for me. I know exactly when it's going to happen because I'm going to get up to do my morning meditation. And after 10 minutes, I will start to levitate. I will hold that for about 10 minutes. Now, that's remarkable, folks, but you know, this whole bird can't fly on one wing thought process can be a service to me. So I thought I better fact check that with a second test. I will fill my bathtub and if my foot doesn't sink when I step on the water, following the levitation, I guess, okay, I can, I can phone in. Hey, guys, I got it. It's been real. <laughs> I'll be over here if you need me. No. There's not a place to get to. If I'm always looking for my good in some outer region, in some other time and space, my good is always going to be a step ahead of me. My good is right here and right now. Nature is right here and right now. God acts in our lives right here and right now absolutely impeccable sense of timing that spirit has to work 
miracles in our lives. And we don't have to look far for miracles. You know, just sitting on your porch, just, just panning around, looking at, at all of God's creation. Right in your backyard, there's a whole ecosystem in your backyard. Some of these creatures that we talked about, they're there. They are everywhere. The manifestation of God, every blade of grass that we have a chance to, to rub our feet in, every tree, it is all here before us. All of this magnificence, the magnificence is standing there staring at you when you're brushing your teeth. They're stalking you. They won't leave you alone while you're brushing your teeth in front of the mirror. That is a divine expression of this one life. If you want to know what natural, I want you to take a moment to just look around the room at people next to you. This is the face. This is what natural divinity looks like. And when you go into King Super, take a look around. That is natural divinity. Now, I've got to be honest about it. There are some folks that are a lot better at hiding their divinity than others. <laughs> you know, this doesn't mean that it's not there. Our charge as people of consciousness in this way of faith is to look beyond. We get stuck in conditions. Everything starts from the inside, works its way out. We get stuck in these conditions, you know. Our conditions are an outpouring of this level of consciousness. And we are at choice. It's, it's like having an appliance. We, we, we could consider ourselves appliances. We are spiritual appliances. We've got an unlimited source of power working in us, around us, through us, as us. Like any other household appliance, if we unplug it, we're out of power. You know, we lack power. Oh, where's the power? It's through our practices. It's through things like spiritual mind treatment, through prayer, meditation, spiritual mind treatment. We plug into the source because we've got spirit at work. And when we're in that flow, like water, we understand that there's this power at work that knows, that knows that is all. I've got access to that, unless I choose to cut myself off from that. See, there's this little thing called ego, and it wants to tell us, be like everybody else, only better. It wants to control everything. It wants to be recognized as all there is. It's not. It's there to protect us. We try to protect ourselves from bad experiences and things that we don't want to feel. And that might work for a while if we wall ourselves off, but we also cut off the flow of love and compassion and other things that nurture us. If you want to be free, Michael Singer says, you have to be open and not protect yourself. Nature has all the safeguards that we need. Our divine nature to grow, evolve, expand, and create is our safety net. Our uniqueness doesn't stop with us. It spreads out all over the planet. And we must remember for ourselves that we are that divine expression. It's easy to forget that when fear comes in. Or, you know, we're doing things unconsciously or we have a moment when we forget. We're having a human experience. Oh, you know, if we lose a friend and we're in grief, you know, sometimes we, we go to people and say, well, you know, I know how you feel. Well, that's, that's amazing. I don't know how you can live in my head and be able to stand it for any length of time. But we, we have different experiences. We are so unique, our grief is unique. Our grief is unique, our joy is unique. Our charge as children of God is to, is to companion with people, to follow along, to be with them, to understand what it is that they're going through, and to be there to support them, to be supportive of that. 
We're so unique. Eric Butterworth has wonderful literature, spiritual uh, economics, and many other things. It's a very, very good author. We have a lot of material here that we use in Science of Mind that is very helpful to us in learning and in expanding our consciousness. So it's important to remember that what we focus on expands. This is how we're able to perpetuate conditions in our lives that are contrary to what it is we want to experience. We're thinking, I don't want to have accidents. I don't want to have accidents. I don't want to have accidents. And because we're thinking having accidents, we find ourselves constantly stubbing our toe or maybe slicing our finger at the cutting board or God forbid backing into a, par a stop sign or somebody else's car, or, oh, geez, I don't want to experience any lack, or I don't want to be sick, I don't want to have the flu, 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 guess what? You're sneezing, you know, because the energy is going into this. What is it that we want to experience? And we're creating, whether that's intentionally or unintentionally. So with this divine nature, knowing that we've got an unlimited source of power, knowing that all is conspiring for our own good, and I'll, I'll submit to you, there's a universal conspiracy for our own good. You know, it's the Father's pleasure, good pleasure to give us the kingdom. They wrote that down somewhere. And what does that mean? That means that everything is open to us, provided we are open to it. There's nothing that this power can't do for us that can't be done through us. Or as a friend of mine put it many years ago, if I lock myself in the closet and pray for food, God's not going to shove a hot dog through the keyhole. God and I together can move mountains, but I should show up at the site with a wheelbarrow and a shovel to get started and know that everything else, and trust that everything else, and call upon this divine within, and know that the right people and the right materials are going to show up when I am in the right consciousness, in the flow, and recognize my connection to all that is. And as citizens of this planet, as people, as creatures with volition, to make that discovery and that connection to the one, we have a great responsibility to take care of everything. Take care of our bodies, take care of the planet, take care of each other. And there are people that aren't going to want us to do that. There are people that are going to want to be in that negative space. We don't have to show up to every fight we're invited to. We don't have to look at people that, in a way that is just not uplifting. It's that understanding that everyone and everything is divine. When we're in the middle of conditions that are uncomfortable, there is another side. And if we go back over the course of our lives, we can think about how the right person showed up. Something unexpected, unexpected gifts, unexpected blessings. They just seem to come out of nowhere. Miracles, they're right in front of us. You don't have to look far. They are everywhere. When you see the wind, when you see the rain, the trees, people moving around from place to place. Remember, there was a point where we were running around naked with clubs, and we didn't even know what fire was. And now we've got the remarkable technology that allows people, thousands all over the planet, to look at this message from wherever they sit in their living room on demand, the technology that keeps us living longer than we ever did. We believe in the prayer and the pill. Everything that has come forth to keep these temples that carry our spirits together works for good. It's all here, it's all there. We believe everything is here for our healing, for our betterment, 
for our own good principle of life must be prolific, that is, tending to multiplicity, and therefore the original thought image must be fundamental to whole races and not exclusive to a particular individual. If you cut a person open, it doesn't matter what part of the world they're from, and somebody puts a, a cup of blood in front of you, you will not be able to tell what that person looked like. You will not be able to tell if they were black, white, brown, whether they came from India or Addis Ababa, Egypt. Uh, not Egypt, that's in uh, Addis Ababa, it's in Ethiopia. But you won't be able to tell whether it was a man or a woman, where they came from. Just like the snowflakes, each and every part of this planet, each and every creature on this planet, each and every person in this room, out there in, in the world, is a necessary part of this creation. If it wasn't necessary, it wouldn't be here. We honor it all, and this is particularly true of people, we honor all the people we honor everyone that's here as a necessity. We know that these are God's creations. We know that we are odd, all God's creations. So we have some opportunities. We have some opportunities as we go forth this week and think about our divine nature, think about the nature all around us, all the people around us. The first opportunity is to suspend judgment. Let's not jump to any conclusions about that person that's raising hell in the checkout in front of us, or the person that's driving like a maniac uh, in front of us. We don't know. They might be in our way for that split second, but we don't know what they're experiencing. We do know that they are naturally we have to remind ourselves that these folks are naturally divine in that moment. We have to remind ourselves when we lose our tempers or, or we act in a way that's not quite spiritual to our way of thinking, that we are still naturally divine, spirits having a human experience. Our second opportunity is to look for the divine. Look for the divine in everything. If you want to see a miracle, it's unfolding everywhere in front of you. It's all about our perspective. And the third opportunity is for practice. It's for us to use spiritual mind treatment to remember that spiritual mind treatment in the form of prayer is the most potent weapon in our arsenal, so to speak. It's that thing that binds us. We recognize that we are part of this one life, and that everything God is, I am. And then we speak. We can speak. We actually have the power to speak and to be that which we want to experience. And we give thanks for all of that because our good is here. Not later. It's here right now. And then we release these words into divine law. And divine law doesn't have a dog in the fight, so to speak. It is impartial. It imp we impress our thoughts and our feelings upon it. This is how, when we're thinking about what we don't want constantly, it pops up. Because divine law does not judge what we put into it. It gives it to us as we speak it. So it's our energy, it's our life force, it's our divinity. It's our trust in the divine. And we can trust the divine to work in our lives and to bring forth all that we could possibly want. And know that spirit through us is our abundance, it's our source, it's our supply. It is all around us. And remember that we are naturally divine. So let's go into prayer. God is all there is. The living, 
loving, powerful source of good that fuels all of creation. And we know deep inside that each and every one of us has a fundamental idea of that power that we call God. We know that all that God is, each and every one of us are. And we go forth this week knowing that we are naturally divine, that we are unique expressions. We go forth knowing that we are at choice through volition and that we have a sacred duty to take care of all around us, to take care of our planet, to take care of the creatures that inhabit it, to take care of the temples that are the magnificent vessels, our bodies, that we go through this journey of love and service and experience and joy, peace and harmony and all good that we want to experience. We give, give thanks, I give thanks for each and every person who is watching this broadcast, each and every person who is in this room, each unique and divine, beautiful experience of that divine life that is at work every moment of every day. I give thanks for all of you. I release my word into divine law where it is done at the intersection of right here and right now where the good is in this moment and continuing to move forward. And we bring this together by declaring, and so it is. You may know this one. Join me singing if you know it. God, you are every mountain. God, you are every ocean. God, you are every canyon, every inch of earth and sky. God, you are every morning. God, you are every midnight god you are every moment every second of my life everything i see everything i do everything i am is you everything above everything below everything i know is you Every sunrise, God, you are. Every moon glow, God, you are. Every star shine, every inch of earth and sky, God, you are. Every springtime, God, you are. Every snowfall, God, you are. Every season, every second of my life. Everything everything I do everything I am is you everything above everything below everything I know is you cause you are the very breath I breathe and your perfect love created is you everything above everything below everything i know is you everything i see everything i do everything i am is you everything above everything below everything i know is you
Hello, I'm Reverend Jen Wild, Senior Minister for New Dawn Center for Spiritual Living. New Dawn Center is a global community and we welcome all people, all paths, all ways of thinking, all philosophies. So know that you are welcome here and thank you for joining our online community.